starting today with parabolae and completed square form. So yesterday we looked at parabola in brackets or factorised parabola. Today they are still going to be in brackets, but they're going to be in CSF form, completed square form, which we did in algebra. All right, so we know how to make it into completed square form because we learnt that in our algebra unit. This time it will generally be given to you already in completed square form. So we're going to utilise that fact. Now, when we were doing completed square, we didn't know why we were doing it, but this is the main reason for being able to write it like that. So the general form for completed squares is... y equals k, x minus a squared, that's what makes it a parabola, plus b. So very, very similar to our absolute value. We just had absolute values here. Still the same a and b because that a and b describes the vertex. All right, it's the vertex, and it's the same for this graph. All right, so there are graphs that have a, a an important point in them. For these two, it's the vertex, and we um, and we have that AB. Yesterday, we had C and D, and that's because we were looking at C and D being x-intercepts, not a vertex. So we'll change the letters on them. So this one does give us the vertex at AB. Remember that A, that a goes backwards. So instead of it being negative, it's an AB. And it also has that K, which is the multiplier. So it tells us how wide the parabola is going to be. All right? So in the same vein as we did it the other day, we're going to do one without k. So E D. All right. So what will A be? Um, one negative one. Negative. Good. A will be negative one. B will be negative one. And K will be. One. Remember, zero means that the whole thing's gone away. So we need a k to be at least one. So that tells us that the vertex is at negative one, negative one. And that's enough information to be able to draw this graph. So finding that information out, I'm going to try and make that almost the middle of my graph. All right, negative one, negative one. So I've pushed the centre of the graph or the origin sort of that way. From there, we use that pattern. So that pattern was one out, one up, one out, three up. So we use that pattern to draw the graph. <coughs> right, one out, one up, one out, three up, and draw the graph. Make sure there's a curve on the bottom, no pointy lines. All right, so that's pretty easy, yes? Yes. Okay, so then let's move on and look at a case where we've got a K. So EG, Y equals negative 2X minus 2 squared plus 1. So we're still going to go through those same things. What's A? Two, good. What's B? One. What is K? Negative two. What does the negative do? Upside down. Good. So all of those things together, we're ready to go. So we've got a vertex this time at two, one. All right. So we does that give us? That gives us. Two, one, and we're coming downwards. So I'm going to put my axis way up here. Two, one. All right. But this time, because k is two, instead of going one out one, we're going to go one out two, one out six. All right. So we're doubling the y's. So we get one out two, one out six. So that's going to go right down and through seven.
should be approximately symmetrical. So through that middle part. Okay, so that's that one done. Right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to look at how to find the equation given a graph. Okay. So to find the equation of a graph, we have got to have a graph to start off with. Yeah? Molly? How did I know that was 7? Okay, because I went 1 out 2, 1, 2, that's now 1, and then 1 out 6. So I went 1 out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's not 7, it's... Yeah. Alright, so those are the only points that we actually know on the graph. Does that make sense? Not really. All right. With two, we're doubling every movement on the y-axis. So we would normally go one out, one up, or down. One out, three. One out, five. One out, seven. Now we're going to double each of those. So one out, two. One out, six. The next one would be one out, ten. Five, ten. Okay? Right, let's have a look at the graph then. Here's the graph. So, you've got this graph, it's gone through, it's got a vertex at negative 3, negative 5, and it's gone through the origin, or 0, 0. We want to find the equation of it. So, just as we've done every other time, we write out our equation, well, we write out what we know. So, we know A equals negative 3, B equals negative 5, K equals, we don't know. That's the one we're finding. But we do have an extra point that we do know. What is that point? Which is at? Zero, zero. Remember, we can't use the vertex, but we can use the zero, zero. So we've got y equals k x minus a squared plus b equals k x plus 3 squared plus, no, minus 5. Okay, so we now put in these for our x and our y. So we've got 0 equals k, 0 plus 3 squared minus 5. 0 plus 3 squared, what's that? 9. nine. So we've got 9k. 0 equals 9k minus 5. So 9k equals what? Take it on the other side of the palms. 5. k equals 5 over 9. Alright, so our equation of that graph is y equals 5 over 9 x plus 3 squared minus 5. Happy? Good. Right, let's move on to features. We haven't looked at the features of the parabola yet. So, the features from uh, the absolute value graph are very much the same. So, what are they? Features. X intercepts. And how do we find them? We make y equal to zero. What else? The y intercept. Oh, what do we make that? They see it being x equals zero. What else is a feature on our graph? What is another important thing about our graph? The vertex. The vertex. So we can usually find the coordinates of that pretty easily. Yesterday's case was a bit harder. We had to find halfway between the x-intercepts and find that vertex, but today we've got it easily from our cons completed square form. What else do we have? We could have whether it's a positive or a negative, couldn't we? That could be a description. It tells us something about the graph. But the last one is the same as the absolute value, which was... We used it yesterday. 
Good. Line of symmetry. All right. And how does that get written? The x coordinate of the vertex. So y equals that x coordinate. Whatever it happens to be. All right. So those are the features. Okay. There are two more that we haven't learned about yet. Two more words. And they are the domain. The domain is what values on our graph are on our graph for x. So any x values that have a y value. Now in most of our graphs, that's every value. So you can see that no matter what x value I have, I can put it in here and I will get a y value. Therefore, we write that as x, e, r. x can be a member of the real number set or it can be anything. All right? Now, the reason that the domain is really useful is in a lot of the practical cases of using graphs and using equations, we don't want the whole equation all the way down to negative infinity or whatever. We don't want to know the value of x equals negative 468 because we're, this graph is actually all about the distance from here to there. And there's no such negative all over there distance. All right. So when we have those sort of things, we, we do what's called restricting the domain. So we have a certain amount of values that we're interested in. So we may restrict the value of the domain just to have, let's say this one, we just want to know where the graph is negative. So we're going to restrict the domain to zero. What would this value over here be? Zero. Good, because it's symmetrical. All right. So zero, negative three, negative six. We only want the values between zero and negative six. So then we'd write the domain as the x values between ne uh, negative three, no, zero is the biggest one. So it should be on that side. So zero and negative six. So that's how we'd write it if we wanted to restrict it in some way. The y values are a bit different. They have a name too. They're called the range. So the range of values that we have an answer for. All right. So the y values on our graph. Not all the y's are on our graph. The x's, we have a lot of them, right? They keep going, boo, 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 go there. But which values here do not have y values? Where is there no y? Up there. From where up? From one up. There's no y values from one up. The graph is all below one on the y-axis. So our range is y is less than 1 and equal to, or in this case, y is more than, what do we call more than? Greater than <laughs> negative 5. All right? So those would be written in the same way, but with y's in them. So the top one would be y is less than, looking like an L, sort of, less than or equal to 1. That would be that graph up there. Or you could write it as y is greater than or equal to negative 5. That would be that graph. Okay? So that's how we would write them. And there are times and there are assessments where you actually have to state the domain, restrict the domain, or state the range. Okay? Done.